Okay. Now, all of us stored one script right to create a curve, I called it what script underscore curve right. I hope all of you saved some script or other to create a picture right. Now, we have been doing a bit of hand waving. We said, how do we run that script? You open IPython and from inside type percentage run minus i script name. That is actually a bit of a bullshit. Why? A Python script should not require an IDE to run it. When you submit or when you distribute a program, you distribute the executable or the runtime engine if it is a Java program, but you do not distribute the IDE, correct? IPython is an IDE. So, we only told you how to run it from within the IDE. So, we have to run it from outside the IDE. So, I suggest let us do this. Let us go to the command prompt. There must be some pi file somewhere. Yeah, mine is here curve script dot pi. So, how to run a Python file? We know already, right? We know it as slightly more animation on the decibel level increase would be nice. So, how do you do that Python? Curve underscore whatever dot pi should run the script, correct? Please run your scripts. We claimed you have written Python scripts, correct? Yes or no? But we cheated by running them from within IPython. So, let us verify we have actually written Python scripts or not. So, run it at the command prompt whatever is your Python script and see whether you get that curve picture whatever you prepared it for. So, what happens when you run it? Lens space not defined. So, obviously, we were cheating, correct? Because inside IPython, somewhere lin space was not a problem, but when you run like this, it is a problem, which means we have not really said how to write a script. I sort of cheated you, it is time to do the uncheating. So, what do you mean by that? Let us run it. I do not know who lin space is. Good. which brings us to what we are talking about. The idea of namespaces and modules is what we want to focus on. Each of these symbols is defined in a library. A symbol could be the name of a function or the name of a constant. P i is a constant that is defined somewhere. So, that symbol has meaning there. Similarly, Lin space is a function that also has meaning only inside a particular library. So, when we said IPython minus PyLab, we were sort of sweeping under the carpet or rather we were preparing a lot of background work without committing or explaining what we are doing. When we type IPython minus PyLab and hit enter, all the libraries get loaded. So, there is no worry about where to find lin space because lin space is already in your pocket when because you have said ipython minus pylab. So, we need to explicitly say I want that lin space which is in scipy. I want plot and plot where do I get plot? Oh, you get it from pylab. So, that the python script can actually run it. So, let us see how to do that part. Let us edit this file. I will use an editor of my choice. You may choose any editor of your choice. So, the way to do is, is import scipy import pylab now, lin space comes from scipy. So, say scipy 
dot lens phase. Plot comes from pi lab, say pi lab dot p. Similarly, x label comes from pi lab. Obviously, we cannot see anything if it is like this. So, we need to do a pi lab dot show. Okay. Now, if we run this, let us see what happens. If anybody was noticing, you know I made one error. Sign function? Sign is missing. Let us find out what is missing. pi is not defined. See, 2 star pi, pi is also defined in psi pi. So, we will fix that next. Like I said, psi ram, right? psi ram opined, the, maybe the cos is also not defined. Let us see whether that is true. Yes, yes, which is what you said earlier, correct. So, we will fix that. Cos is defined in more than one place, but we will settle for psi pi for the moment. Once again. There is another reference to pi which we forgot to fix. There you go. Which is exactly the same thing we produced with the x, cosine x, title, everything in place. So, this tells you about the idea of modules in Python and how do we import existing functionality. People we were talking in the morning asked what is this numpy and things like that. So, people added functionality to core Python by adding arrays are added in numpy and so on. And built it by separate library, scipy, pylab or different libraries. Matplotlib is wrapped around by pylab, scipy is scientific python, that is numpy is numeric python. So, scipy actually pulls in all of numpy itself. So, different packages, different modules if you want to, if you like that name better, implement different pieces of related functionality. PyLab as you already know is implementing all plotting and related functionality. SciPy is implementing all scientific computational functionality, which is why cos, sin, all the hyperbolics, the usual special functions, all of them are in SciPy. And you saw SciPy has sub modules like optimize from which we picked up f solve, integrate from which we picked up ODE int. So, SciPy is a large package with specialized packages for differential equation solution and so on. So, the correct way to use them is like shown here. There is a wrong way to use which is saying from scipy import star, then you do not have to type that scipy every time, which is exactly what import minus pylab is doing in the background. It is effectively saying it is as if you type from scipy import star. But this idea of a a dot module dot symbol is lot better because it allows you to have different modules define the same symbol with different meanings as relevant to the module. If you say from scipy import star, you cannot have a PA with a different meaning anywhere else because there is only one PA. 
okay, because pi now is a global symbol. If you instead said import sci pi and said sci pi dot pi, there is another module calculus where I have defined a different pi, I can say calc dot pi, they will refer to two different entities. Understood? So, in the early when you are working interactively, you do not want to type sci pi dot pi lab dot every time. So, it is perfectly okay to say i python minus pi lab, but when you write scripts, you should ensure you do it the right way. There are one or two minor improvements available. For example, I can say import sci pi as s p and then instead of typing sci pi every time, type s p dot lin space and so on. Some people prefer that style, their logic being particularly if you use some upper case and things like that, it stands out what modules are used. I consider it a rather bad idea. Sci pi is sci pi, I know I am importing a module, now I have to figure out what is s p. That to me seems an extra bit of work as typing sci pi saving that does not seem to be to be worth it. This is typically the idea done by people who come from the windows world. The Unix guy will set up a keyboard macro, so that he would not have to type sci pi every time. That is what I will do. I will set up a keyboard macro, then so that I do not type sci pi every time. I may type capital S p, it will expand to sci pi. Readability is more important than any typing trouble, but anyway every person to himself or herself. All right. So, what is a module? Let us spend a little time talking about it. A module is what you could call a library. It is essentially a collection of Python code. It could be a collection of C code and so on. For example, SciPy is wrappers around the complete linear algebra modules or wrappers around a package called LA pack, which is written in Fortran by the way. No one has written better linear algebra modules in the last 50 years nothing to beat Fortran code even today. So, LA pack is wrapped around and called from Python. So, you do not know you are using Fortran code, but you are whenever you use sci pi, but you use it with the Python way of doing things. So, like that each package packages implements wraps around different pieces of functionality. For example, there is a HTTP lib for doing web related things. There is a numpy for array and similar implementation, scipy for all of this, pylab for plotting and so on. Whatever you want to think of, there would be a library already for that. And how do you know what are the things that library implements? Python supports heavy introspection, so you can actually ask it and then get to see it, what are the symbols exported and so on. Creating your own modules is also easy, we will talk about it in a minute. If we write a function like this, okay, we are coming to an important point, so yes. Hmm. Whether it is possible to include that, it is not possible, no. If, uh, Suppose I want to run the, this program that is solving uh, differential equation other things from Python itself, but I have not installed IPython. You do not need to. It, it will be the automatically script, implemented. The script is not depending on IPython. So, it will automatically implement that import at uh, the library SCI That's, Pi. No, no, it will not. We implemented it. Okay, okay, okay. We have implemented it, import sci fi. We have made it bring it in. If you type ipython pylab, then it is as good as typing from scipy import star, so that you do not have to type scipy every time, which is fine for interactive work, you do not want to be typing, you want to explore fast. So, if you want to replace that, you do not have ipython, in python you type from scipy import star, from pylab import star, then in the python prompt itself you can do the same thing. Okay, Let us do that and convince ourselves. This is the python prompt, right. Now, let me say print pi, boom, 
what pi, who pi, where pi, of course, we do not say anything about it. So, we say import psi pi, now we say print psi pi, okay. I made a small mistake, let us take it from the beginning. no idea what pi is. No idea what psi pi is either, because it does not know psi pi from Adam. You have to say import psi pi. Now, it knows what psi pi is and brings that code into the, now print psi pi dot pi works. This is a bad way of doing things, acceptable only for interactively. What is the advantage? Now, there is no need to say psi pi dot. If you say import psi pi, you have to say psi pi dot pi. If you say from psi pi import star, that all the symbols are in the current namespace, which obviously means some names may be overwritten. If there are some symbols brought in from psi pi, which shadow the names in yours, you are finished. Often what people do, they will use, there is a built in function called str, correct? You saw it and many of you I am sure used a variable called str also. If you say str equal to, let us see, see this first. str 123, this is the function. Now, if you said boom, str object is not callable. What made it not callable? You have overwritten the function called str with a string called str. This is the type of problem that can occur if you do from sci pi import star. That nothing is lost here, if I del str, that hello is de dead, if I say del str, this hello is dead now. So, the masking of the str function disappears, because it is only temporary you created a symbol str and pointed it to a string. Instead of you overwrote the pointer address essentially, once you removed the point, the pointer restored to the earlier value. But such nice things may not happen, if you do not even know such a overwriting is taking place by using from sci pi import star type of error. So, but obviously when you are trying to interactively explore no one wants to type sci pi sci pi every time, so it is ok to do it and the way is to if you do not want to use i python or you do not have i python the way to do it is this like we said just now. As you can see, we are running all of this from inside python, not ipython. ipython gives additional niceties like plot question mark, that is not available inside python. Inside the python interpreter, python interpreter does not know anything more, ipython is an IDE. So, when you whatever you type, it grabs it, checks whether it is a special symbol it has meaning for like percentage hist acts on it, if it does not, it hands it over. But if you do not have ipython, does not mean what we talked about today cannot be done. 
here is the way to do it. But percentage hist question mark will not work, because they are very specific to I Python. Does it answer your question? Okay. All right. So, how do we write our own modules? This is important enough. So, may I request all of us to do whatever we do to wake up thoroughly. Whether you remember solve or F solve will not make much of a difference, but whether you remember this or not will make a lot of a difference. We have been importing PyLab, PyLab importing SciPy and using. You know when you write programs, you would like to write your own functions and import them and use in other programs. How do you use that? One simple way is to say, you simply write it, save it as a script and then let us do just that. I am sure you already written the GCD function enough times. Now, you have written that GCD pi, let us see. Please note it did not give any error, which means import succeeded. So, we have written a module called GCD and we have used it. So, what are all the symbols that GCD exports? A whole host of them, which are standard for every module plus a symbol called GCD. So, how do you use the GCD function now? If I hit enter, what will happen? What will happen? All right, thanks for not listening so far. What will happen is GCD symbol is not defined. Where is it defined? In module GCD. So, how do you access it? GCD dot GCD. So, only if I do that, I will get it. Okay? Not very difficult, but requires an alert mind. Not exactly available in good supply at 5 pm. So, this is how one writes one's own modules. Obviously, we wrote a toy module with only one function, it could have 10 functions, you could have an LCM in it, you could have something else in it and all that. So, you will use GCD dot GCD, GC dot LCM and so on. The name of the module is the name of the dot pi file. Now, where is it coming from? It must be in the path where it can be picked up. There are standard locations in the operating system. If you are discussing Linux operating system, it will be slash USR slash share slash site Python 2.6 slash site packages. Please do not write down, do not even bother to remember it. All you need to know is there are standard locations. So, if you want to put yours, it has to be in a standard location. Otherwise, if you are using for your convenience, it has to be in the current directory, because current directory is a nice location. Everybody looks there. Okay. So, but there are some problems with this. Why? Typically, how would you write a module? 
how do you know GCD works? In the case of GCD, it may be different, but in the case of a different package, some more work may be required. So, how do you know it is working? So, it is normally a good idea to write test code which verifies it is working. What can we do? Now, this will simply print 4, but how do you know whether it is right or wrong? We are anticipating a little bit of tomorrow, but anything you write like this is very poor. Why? 1, it will print 4, does not tell you anything. Is 4 right or wrong? You do not know, but when typing the code, you know what is the expected answer, correct? So, any testing you write should not be diagnostic display. Instead, you should think more and say, you know what? You have to say if, definitely that is not a way to say if, yes. Is it 8? Okay. It is unfortunately in a poor color for visibility. So, this is better test code. So, what happens? A good test suite is as many data as you think necessary. Obviously, we are only showing the idea. So, in a real life implementation, you would not do this badly, because you may want some 10 pieces of data and you are not going to type if g c d a comma b 10 times. Instead, what will you do? You will do something like I will do that in a minute. Does not work? PT hundred still is color. Anyway, so look at this. Here we put the test data in a variable called test data and we use the for loop to step through. This is more standard way of providing your own test code. All right. So this way whatever modules you write, whatever functionality you implement carries its own test code. So, people can check it, you should do that, but there is a problem here. What is the problem? Let us see the problem in a minute.
it is running all this when you import, you do not want that. Like anyway, there is a there is a problem there to start with, that is bad enough, but the important thing is uh, set indentation is one part. But notice how this is not what you want. Whenever you import sci pi, if it printed some 800 lines, it is not a good thing, correct. So, you want the test, but you do not, this is not right which brings us to the right way of doing it, which is where we will stop today's sessions. And the right way of doing it is another feature of Python. We want to say, you know what, we want to run this code. If it is running as a script standalone, we want to run this code. That means, somebody is trying to check whether our module is working. If somebody is importing it, they are not running our code, we do not want to run this. That is what we want to say and Python allows you to say it very simply. You put one big if saying, if the underscore underscore name underscore underscore is underscore underscore main underscore underscore, that means it is being run as a script. Remember C's main as the entry point, same idea. When a program is being run, its name is main. So, if your name is main, that means somebody is running this script standalone, do all this. If not, nothing is specified, so nothing will be done. Let us see the result. Ah, there you are. So, this is the code. The underline is strings. What is with this? What is strings is underline. So, so this is the code we are having. Now, this is a very powerful feature of Python. This is the way you build a nice module. Module comes with its own test code, but the test code does not interfere with using it, only with testing it. So, let us see how that plays out. So, I say python gcd dot pi, all right, the test code comes out. I say import gcd, nothing happens, because that code is in that if name is main. Remember this, because we are going to expect you to use this to build modules as part of the exercises. All right. That happily or not so happily brings us to the end of the day sessions but not the end of the day's work. Any questions? Uh, what do you uh, uh, write there as a uh, capital term on the syntax? Okay, that is what is called an environment variable in Linux. Term is an environment variable in Linux and the term the value of that environment variable decides how the terminal behaves. You saw that earlier there was color coding, certain things were red, certain things were green, but that was interfering with ability to understand. VT 100 is a slightly simpler term, slightly more old fashioned, it does not understand color, it only knows underline and bright, which is why Madhu suggested change it, because red was not readable for you. So, it defines how different programs use their own color. 
in Unix everything is nicely layered. Vim, the editor I use does not care, does not know how to talk to a terminal, it will delegate to somebody. That somebody will delegate to somebody else and that somebody else is what is called a term cap library and the term cap library looks at, okay, I want to show a nice different color. Can I show? What is your name? VT ended, okay, you are an old fashioned idiot, you cannot show, forget it. Vim does not care, so it is built in such nice layers. So, I was changing the pro all programs running on this console, their understanding of what colors are supported for programs. I was lying saying it does not support many colors because the colors were causing a difficulty for you to read. Yes, what next? Yes, Trikan, we have a test for them. Yeah, yeah, that can wait. Oh, that can wait. They need to do two, three things, starting with waking up, for example. Yes, folks, any questions? I have some simple rules I implement with some of my students in my programming classes. You ask me a question, then you are entitled to write a test, otherwise, you are not. I am mightily tempted to implement the same idea. You want to write a test, you have to ask a question which I consider interesting. What is IPython will be definitely not considered interesting and won't count. In fact, the number of questions you may have to ask may go up if you ask such inane questions. Yes, you want to finish this class today and write the test, I suggest you start drumming up some good questions fast. Sir, while giving this double underscore in while checking that uh, if main. Yes. I am getting some error, either, uh, any other addition. If you are getting some error, do something. Uh, this, uh, any additions that is. Like I said, if you are getting some error, do something. If you can give me a meaningful interpret That's description of the error, I might syntax. give you an answer. In, invalid syntax. Invalid syntax. You are not getting some error, you have made some error. You are either missing a quote. No quotes are missing, sir. No quotes are missing. Are you missing a colon at the end of the so if? Whether uh, that name underscore name underscore should be enclosed within colon? No. Quotes within no. quotes? No. Main should be. Main I have enclosed. We have two choices. Hmm. I can come there and then find yeah. the mistake or you can figure it out. What are the chances that you have made a mistake, but it is not working? What are the chances? Pretty low, isn't it? It just now worked on the screen. You saw it. Yes, sir. VT hundred. Anything that is nothing to do with VT hundred. Okay. See, all because of you. Everybody assumes VT hundred is some magic. Okay. Let me run in a non-VT hundred terminal. This is not VT hundred. You can see the colors, right? Okay. <coughs> Where is the space after the if? It takes me half a second to see because I know you have made a mistake. You believe you have not, that is why it is taking you time. It is not I am super intelligent. I know you have made a mistake because experience teaches me. Chances are very high, students and people doing make a mistake, then compiler suddenly decide to turn rogue. You still believe somewhere, I have not done anything, this is me, that is why you are not able to see it. I tell you, just repeat to yourself, I have made a mistake, you will find out in 2 seconds. You get it into your system, I am making the mistake. Do not give in to that feeling, I am all right, this bloody computer something is not working. Sir. Is there any limit on the, uh, the number of uh, elements which will be read from the file? Mm -hmm. Like uh, no we, practical we, limit. No, there yes. is no fundamental limit. Pra Prabhus of the world are they like mm -hmm. numbers with lots of zeros behind them? Uh, EVs of data is standard for aerospace. No, as such, uh, uh, when there is large quantum of elements, like twenty thousand records are there. Twenty thousand is not large. 
uh, is not Million, large. Million, yes, okay. you are talking large. Then it's Millions okay. is large. Twenty thousand is ideal with twenty thirty thousand. And I am an application programmer in a company. Okay. Prabhu Ramchandran's of the world deal with millions of data items. So, uh, such there is he's, no limitation. No? He is so. uh, aerospace guy, so you can imagine the number of data <coughs> he plays around with. No real limitation. Uh, when the plot is actually plotted with uh, all such uh, large elements, no, then the plot will be somewhere no. Uh, yeah, you need a microscope. Uh, uh, yes, yes. So, will there be any facility or some, something like that to improve upon the quality of it's that? There, the built-in viewer. Oh, will teach achha. you. Just you do a plot that what you see there. By that's an extremely powerful piece of machinery. You can select a piece, zoom in. You can do all that. That viewer, which you are seeing from the morning. <laughs> Okay. The matplotlib's default viewer comes with an enormous functionality. But then, then the zoomed content would be stored in a file. No, uh, that is the problem, no sir. So when we are uh, actually incorporating that uh, zoom data into a LaTeX compatible version, you no, know, then we want some bigger size content. Uh, so you know which area you are zooming. So you cut that alone plot, plot that sub range alone. Okay. Hmm. This is the language, right? So, you have to learn to speak this language. So, I want to zoom a part of an image or part of a chart is ok, I have to plot a subset of the original array I plotted. So, you have to start translating and doing things. You can do anything you do in matplot, I mean sorry in matlab, almost anything, but you can't do it the same way. It's obviously a different way of doing things. Sir, is there any function available for solving the PDE? There is. I JPEG is not a free format. JPEG is not a free format. So, by default, I do not think matplotlib saves in JPEG. PNG, you may have to convert outside from PNG. Please remember that JPEG is encumbered by patents and so on. So, the code is not always clear whether the code is usable for free libraries, code that handles JPEG. JPEG PDF conversion is there? PDF is there. PDF is there. You can save a PDF into a PDF image, EPS, PDF, PS, PNG, even TIFF is there right Srikam? Even TIFF is there, though TIFF is a bit of a beast, not very way to specify the shape of points while plotting different curves. For example, if you specify O, it will come as solid circles, small, small circles. Yeah, is there any way to specify different shapes? What do you think? Um, open circles or... What do you think? Uh, maybe, but I tried some uh, shapes, some of it shows errors. You have a vertical line, you have a horizontal line, you have a thin diamond, you have a diamond, you have an X, you have a star, a pentagon, square, right, triangle right, triangle left, triangle up, triangle down. Circle, pixel, plot will tell you which are the legal plotting characters. Then in ODNT, 
can we give our desired method because different methods will have different rate of convergence true they will but uh, odnt actually is not a single method it's uses an internal library of methods and you can specify but you are unlikely to beat its intelligence this is all coming from the days of fortran so this has been tested for 40 plus years you are unlikely to improve on it unless you are solving a particular problem where your expertise is much much more and you know for this particular peculiar problem a particular method will work well on average you are very unlikely to beat the uh, built in algorithm like i said these are old fortran code wrapped around so it's not actually internally you are calling old fortran code from inside python so that's tested for 40 plus years so it's unlikely to be improved for efficiency unless like i said you have very specific domain where you have lot more data even there i don't know it's a bit of a specific area uh, prabhu and his friends have written a generalized solver where they plug in the visualization toolkit where they plug in the uh, choice it could be euler it could be range kutta it could be what is that range kutta 4 5 and all the other methods so it is not difficult to write please remember passing a function as a argument is child's play in python so it is happening internally it is calling different functions i have a feeling you can specify also just look at up from scipy dot integrate import od int and do od int question mark and check it should tell you whether other things are possible c or any other means uh, turbo c i have used that i want to find the particular function is uh, you uh, by default uh, it's a if it is uh, default function is it is defined some header file just like uh, math dot hp or all like uh, here we use some plot some line space uh, sometimes it is belongs to scilab sometimes it belongs to pylab so how i f uh, find uh, means how i i will find that plot is belongs to scilab or um, belongs to means because i need to import uh, uh, scipy and import pylab you don't start with a function right Pardon? you don't start by i need to i need a function plot where is it available you don't start there you start by i want to plot a chart so where is the functionality available then you look at okay in that module what are the exported symbols correct you never start with a function name and start wondering which module it is available from that's not how it happens you have phrased your question in that fashion but you rarely start there uh, just like we have used today and uh, line space and we used uh, it why we know we started by saying we want to plot and for plotting we need certain of these functionalities that is all Idan. In a given situation, you are not likely to, I have this function, I do not know what to do with it, right? You will never be in that situation. You will say, I want to do x, how to do x? Then when you look it up, you will normally see all documentation will refer to both. Because uh, when I use plot and uh, question mark, it gives that it is uh, something uh, pi lab and dot lab. But for line space, I have searched there is no such uh, implement sci Saying it is in sci fi. You are checking whether I am giving a wrong answer no or not. No, sir. Right? Uh, before, no. Uh, uh, okay, okay. before uh, question, I understand. You, I See, find. that's what I will only repeat what I said. You are rarely going to be, this is a classroom situation where you know these two functions. So, you are looking for it. But in a new setup, you are unlikely to start with a function name and not know anything about it. In which case, of course, Google is there to find out. Python documentation is extremely good. Python is one of the better documented languages. But the problem is Python standard library is well documented. You, the problem you are describing is you do not know which library to look for. So, yes, in 
raw terms that looks like a difficult problem, in reality it rarely happens that way, because almost any Google search will turn up which package it belongs to. Yes, sir. So, my question is, uh, as the Python is a object oriented language, so how is it, it is going to handle the objects and the memory management? I do not know and when you find out do me a favor, do not tell me, I do not even want to know. It works, Python is a language intended to write replication systems, it is a language designers questions outside my area of speciality. Thank you. Uh, sir, object attribute starting with uh, double underscore, does it have any special meaning? Uh, the, it has a special meaning that they are not to be used, they are for the internal purpose of the module. So, private attributes? No such dirty word in Python, <laughs> there is nothing private, but this says the writer of the module intends this to be used internally and expects you will behave responsibly by not using it, but he will treat you like an adult and leave it there, not treat you like a child and say if you use it there will be a syntax error, which is the private way of doing things. There is no private public in Python. The word object oriented is very heavily overloaded, so that is another reason I do not want to go into the discussion of uh, Digambar's question about object orientation, how it handles. Python's object orientation is very different from the C++ Java model. C++ Java model of object orientation, there is nothing special about it. But that is the only one many people know, so everybody thinks another model of object orientation is either wrong or insufficient. So, it will become a too big a discussion. In reality, the C Java model of object orientation is very deficient, it is nowhere near half good. If you are interested, tomorrow we will allocate some 10 15 minutes for discussing that. But I would expect you to remind me, I will not start, but that is a very rather bruising debate, what is object orientation. Yes, sir. somebody else was raising his hand in between. Next question, only this side is talking so far, and even that too some selected audience. We can all have a private discussion in the uh, guest house <coughs> later, if I am going to talk to only these 3, 4 people, I can do it later. So, in C we have structure, is there any form like structure in Python? Depending on what you want to do, you could achieve the same thing with a list. Lists are heterogeneous, structures are heterogeneous, but remember Python is dynamically typed and there is and it is rather weakly typed language. So, if a structure consists of two strings followed by an integer, I cannot enforce it. In C, if I say that is the structure, when I initialize a structure from values, the typing will ensure that some amount of compatibility with the string string int is maintained even that I cannot do in Python. So, you can do it with lists is a faking answer actually. The correct way to do it would be with classes as objects. Sir, while importing, um, say for example, I am impo importing plot function a number of times in my program. Sir, uh, we import only once. No, no, sir. I, I, I'm using plot function many times. Like uh, with the import, can I uh, like say PyLab? Uh, like say instead of star, I can use uh, 
plot function sure. short you thing can like instead of star you can import specific specific functions oh yes, you can so say that we can reuse that in the uh, you so that you can misuse that is a more <laughs> better description yeah you can say from sci pi or from pi lab import plot which plot. allows bring plot into the current namespace yes. so there is no need to say pi lab dot plot every yeah, time yeah, yeah. but you can say you know what i only beat one person i didn't beat everybody whether it is better behavior or not is open to question if but we consider beating up other beating up people bad behavior whether there is some mitigation available because you beat up only one person as opposed to everybody is all the difference but it will save uh, time when you are use reusing that same function in it saves time time when you are typing yes yeah typing yeah. i Thank prefer you. to think the typing is the least of my ta- bothers uh, hello sir uh, after declaration the array a1 is equal to array and we declare it something okay and exactly below that we declare the a1 hash 1 minus d sir uh, i don't understand the 1 minus d what is the 1 minus d didn't we talk about hash being a common character let me take 5 minutes i'll talk about one feature of python then i'll hand you over to strikant let's say you have a function doesn't matter what it is in and you want to check a variable between different invocations in other words whenever this function is invoked that variable must change its value how do you do that in c you would do a static variable inside a function so how do you do it in a language like python in c static variables are the answer inside a function you define a variable static so first time it has a value so it has a value which is initialized at compile time which is what happens to static variables right their value is assigned at compile time as opposed to run time and you can increment it it will retain the value between successive invocations as opposed to other variables which are allocated on the stack so that every time they are initialized these values will retain so far based on what you have seen how do you retain a value so how will you increment it inside a function it's a global variable how do you guarantee only from inside that function it is incremented okay python functions are first class objects you can create a variable f dot v where f is a function so that variable is defined in the context of that function can check for its existence you can increment its value you can do all sorts of things so the code concession and power that you get from this is extraordinary i can also check whether the variable exists how do i do that if it doesn't exist because the function is never called there is no compile time so unlike a c static variable i can't rely on the fact that the variable has been defined and it has a value so i can do something like wrap in an exception essentially in a try catch now this will throw an exception because f dot v doesn't exist i can catch it and then define it there and assign the value zero or i can even do this now this will throw an exception because f dot v doesn't exist So 
which is why it is very difficult to answer the question how object oriented python is. Now, you are used to thinking of an object as data with methods attached. Here there is a method with data attached. Now, is it an object? This is a method with data attached to it now. And this V does not exist outside, cannot be referenced as anything other than F dot V, meaning I can refer to it anywhere. It is as global as F, wherever F is visible, F dot V is visible. But remember, the traditionally the notation F dot V is object member, here F is a function and V is a value. No, it could be Q, it could be Ashokan. The question was is anything special about V? No, it could be any variable. Yeah, I should have made that much clearer. Thanks. We can attach anything, I can attach two variables. There is nothing magical about one variable. I can have F dot P and F dot Q also. Like I said, the only caveat is unlike C static variables, where I can rely on the compiler to guarantee existence. In the beginning of the runtime, I have to do the try catch. All right. I hope that gave you a glimpse into some of the powerful things Python as a language can do. None of this is interesting to someone who is going to use it as a plot, as a computational toolkit. But since a significant number of you are computer science people, you may want to look at the language in a different light. It is probably one of the better designed languages of recent times. It has a high functional component, its methodology or rather yeah, methodology agnostic. It does not take a strong view about object orientation or imperative or functional style. It is style agnostic. You could write in any style. Did we do Armstrong numbers by any chance, Srikant? No, not even discuss them. No problem of that type. Fine. Maybe tomorrow we will spend some time writing some code. At that time, we will discuss this issue of different programming styles. What is a classic imperative or a procedural style? What are the other styles and why we talk about Python as a multi paradigm language? You could write code in any of these styles with equal facility. It is not geared towards writing one type of code. You could write excellent, well structured, beautiful procedural programs. It is difficult to write convoluted programs in Python, can be done. You could write well crafted objects. You could also write very nice functional code. If you are not used to seeing functional code the first time, I hope like this understanding functional style of programming would be equally interesting tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot for your patience. I hope to indulge and impose on your patience tomorrow also. See you tomorrow.